Welcome back to Lighting Design 101 with your instructor, Denise Remping. I am Denise Remping, come to bring you another lesson about basic lighting fundamentals and theory. This video is going to be about how to appropriately use your follow spot. I gave you an introduction to the follow spot in the first video, but let me delve into the operation and purpose of the follow spot a bit deeper. Follow spots are one of those elements of lighting that often get overlooked, even by experienced directors and designers. It is not uncommon for them to become afterthoughts when designing lights. When used correctly, however, they can help enhance a scene, just like any other lighting instrument. But when used incorrectly, as I very often see in high school, college, and even community theater productions, they can be quite distracting and draw unwanted focus. Before I delve into how follow spots can be used correctly or incorrectly, let me first talk about the features of the follow spot. As I mentioned in the first video, a follow spot is a high intensity, hard beamed light that is used to follow moving objects on your stage, usually your actors. A follow spot can often be the brightest lighting instrument you have available to you, which is part of their advantage, but that also means they get far hotter than any other light you have. Follow spots radiate a lot of heat and they also require a huge amount of energy. I have witnessed in a a number of different theaters follow spots blowing fuses, shorting out electrical systems, and even melting power cords when not used correctly. And almost every single follow spot you will encounter will be equipped with a fan for cooling. It is not unusual for follow spots to then be noisy little buggers as a result. So the first thing you will need to know whenever you use a follow spot is to always make sure the cooling fan is on. You will often then have to leave the fan on even after you stop using it, giving the instrument time to cool off. Follow spots, as I mentioned, also have hard beams, much like the beams you'd find in an ERS or ellipsoidal. And just like the ellipsoidals, you can adjust the sharpness of the beam. This is similar to adjusting the barrel of your ellipsoidal. Most follow spots will also come equipped with an adjustable aperture or iris for controlling the size of your beam. With this feature, you can make your beam large enough to fit two people or small enough to just highlight an actor's head. And finally, most follow spots will also come equipped with color changers. This particular follow spot has a series of color frame holders you can lift and click into place as needed. Now let me get into operating your follow spot. Many a tech director will tell you that operating a follow spot is pretty easy, which I won't argue with on too many levels. In comparison to other crew jobs, it is among the easier tasks to accomplish. I have seen, for example, many theaters giving this job to young crew members, some as young as 11 or 12 years old. However, this is not to say that it does not require some training. For starters, like I previously showed you in the Hang and Focus video, lights come equipped with two axes of rotation, a tilt and a pan. Follow spots are designed to have easily manipulated tilt and pan features so you can follow your actors on stage with ease, but you can also lock a follow spot into place quickly and easily. The pan, or the back and forth rotation, is typically left loose and doesn't require much manipulation. But the tilt, or the up and down, usually comes with a lever, like in this case, or adjustable knob you can loosen and tighten for easy movement. With both axes of rotation, you then have a wide range of movement at your disposal. The rest of this video is going to be dispelling the myth that operating a follow spot is as simple as just following your assigned actor on stage, because it absolutely is not. A really good follow spot operator can do so much more than just point and follow. For example, knowing where to place your beam on an actor is important. I have seen so many inexperienced spot operators pointing the beam in the wrong place, typically cutting off an actor's head in the process. The correct spot to aim a follow spot is at an actor's chest or their head, depending on the size of your aperture. Your goal, for example, isn't always to get an actor's full body into the light, as many inexperienced operators will assume. Your goal is to, first and foremost, make the actor's face visible. 
From there, the size of your beam will determine how much of the actor then should be in the beam. If the beam is smaller, you may only get their face. A little larger, you can get their head, their shoulders, and their chest into the beam. Really large spotlights will fit their full body, but most of the time this is not the look your director or lighting designer wants. When in doubt, aim the hot spot or center of the beam on the actor's chest and follow your stage manager's directions on how big to make the beam. Pro follow spot operator tip. If you aren't sure if you are hitting your actor correctly, take a look at their shadow. You can immediately tell if they are in the center of the beam or not. Another aspect of follow spot operation you need to be familiar with is how to use your follow spot efficiently when there are two follow spots being used. Sometimes, particularly in musicals, there will be two follow spots following two actors on stage, usually during duets. When this is the case, the appropriate method of use is to follow the actor on the opposite side of the stage from your follow spot. For example, if you are operating the follow spot on house left, that's the audience's left, then you should be following the actor on stage left, that's the actor's left. The other follow spot will then be following the actor on stage right, and your beams will cross. If the actors switch sides, and they often will, then you will switch the actor you are following. For example, if you are following actor A on stage left with your house left follow spot, and they switch sides with actor B, you will then switch to actor B at the moment they cross paths. Actor B now being on stage left, and actor A on stage right. Another pro follow spot operator tip. Attend as many rehearsals as you can. Get familiar with the show, particularly where the actors are moving. The more familiar you are with the show, the better you will be able to follow the actors on stage. One of my pet peeves as a lighting designer is watching follow spots that are not following actors appropriately. They are bouncing around the stage trying to find their actor, they are lagging behind the actor's movement, or they are moving too quickly and dipping the actor into shadow. It's really frustrating to watch, so spend some time getting to know the show. It seems like an inconsequential task, but believe me, it will make a world of difference. Another element of follow spot operation and use I want to discuss is the intensity of the follow spot. This has more to do with lighting design than operation, but as a future lighting designer, you will need to think about these things. A follow spot, as I mentioned, is super bright, most likely the brightest lighting instrument you will have available to you for a show. This is by design, as a follow spot's main purpose is to highlight an actor in a scene, or in other words, to make them stand out or pop from the scene. The human eye, and really the brain, is designed to notice the brightest object in the room, and when a follow spot hits a specific actor, it immediately draws the eye of the audience. This is very useful, for example, during musicals when an actor is singing. As directors and designers, we want the audience to focus on the person singing, so sometimes we throw a follow spot on them to help make that happen. Unfortunately, what I see happen way too often in cases where the people involved in the production don't understand the purpose of a follow spot is that the follow spot doesn't draw focus to the actor per se, but rather draws unnecessary focus to itself. This is often because either A, the aperture is too big, B, the edges of the beam are too sharp, C, the color is too bright, or D, the biggest reason, the intensity is too high. What happens in this case is the eye is now drawn to the follow spot itself, or rather the large bright white circle it is now creating on the floor or on the scenery. You want the audience to look at the actor, not the light. This is a prime example of when lighting design goes bad. It's the opposite of not enough light. It's too much light. Take note of this footage here, for example. Notice how your eye gets drawn to the light itself, or rather the large circle it creates when the intensity is bright. But when we lower the intensity, it becomes less obvious, and we can see instead how it helps pop the actor out of the scene, drawing focus to her instead. 
How you can achieve this subtle look depends on what is happening with the other lights in the scene. A low light or darker scene will require only a tiny bit of light from your follow spot to make the actor stand out. However, brighter scenes will require a lot more light from your follow spot. You can achieve the subtler look by lowering your intensity, but you can also diminish your aperture, making the spotlight smaller, soften your edges, or add color. I would recommend, for example, in a scene with a lot of blue light, adding a bit of color, perhaps a pale blue, to your follow spot. A white follow spot will create a sharp contrast to your blue lights, and by adding color, again, you add just enough light to make an actor stand out. Follow spots, as I've said many times, are often used in musicals, during musical numbers where you want a specific actor or actors to stand out but they can be used for many other reasons as well. Just always keep in mind that whenever you use a follow spot, it will automatically draw the eye of the audience. So use it wisely.